What is happening, guys? Welcome back to Red Beard's Garage, and today we're going to be talking about stroker kit. In the next episode, you're going to see us stroke out the Ghost 212 engine. So we wanted to answer some questions and go over a few things before we get into that video, and that's going to help you understand more about stroker kits and why you would want to do one in your build. So if we step back in time uh, to Harbor Freight back probably 15 years ago or more, if you went in their store, you would find a 196cc Greyhound engine. Now this was a Honda clone like the one we have on the table right here. This is one that comes on a Chinese mini bike. If you buy a Coleman or a Trailmaster mini bike today, it's gonna to come with a 196cc, just like Harbor Freight used to sell back in the day. This was huge for the people in the go-karting world because it gave an inexpensive engine that was most likely at a local retailer uh, with Harbor Freight getting bigger and bigger in the United States. A little bit later came out the Predator 212s. Now this was a big deal because you got more displacement, of course. Now this has a 68 millimeter piston in it and the Predator 212 when it hit the scene had a 70 millimeter piston. So you got a two millimeter bigger board and then they also added one millimeter of stroke to that engine and that's how you equal the 212 engine. If we fast forward seven or eight years later, then the 223s and 224s started hitting the market. And what they did was they kept the same 70 millimeter piston, but they added four millimeter more of stroke. And that would, is how they got to the 223cc engine. If we compare it to the 196, of course we have that two millimeter bigger piston and we have five millimeter more stroke with the 223s over the 196cc engines. If you watch our previous video where we tested the Wildcat 223 versus the Tiltson 212E, we also tested some other engines in that video. You'll notice that there's no replacement for displacement. That old saying is just as true in go-kart engines as car engines. So if you can always start out with more displacement, you're going to make more horsepower and really more torque is where you're going to really shine with the stroker engine. So let's say you have a 212 engine and you want to stroke it out to a 223. EC has a ton of kits to help you achieve this with pretty much any 212 that you have. We have linked all the parts in the video's description and everything we talk about in today's video. So make sure to check those out because those help the channel to continue to do videos just like this. So you might be asking yourself, how would a 58 millimeter improve my performance? And that's gonna happen in four different ways. Displacement, compression, piston speed, and mechanical leverage. So when we're talking about displacement, that's gonna be the bore and stroke of your engine. So when you go up to a 58 millimeter crankshaft, you're gonna add more displacement. When you have more displacement, you have the potential to make more power. With compression, the engine's compression ratio is a total volume of the engine displacement plus the combustion chamber when the piston is at bottom dead center divided by the combustion chamber when the piston is at top dead center. Many things can affect compression ratio of the engine, keeping all the specs the same, but increasing the engine's displacement will increase the compression as well. Now we're gonna go on to piston speed. If we have this 196 cc engine running at 3600 RPMs and this 212 running at 3600 RPMs, most people would think the piston speed is the RPM of the engine, but that is not true. The 212 piston speed will be much greater than the 196 cc's piston speed. And the piston speed is how fast that piston is moving up and down in the bore of the engine. So you're gonna be able to, the more you stroke out an engine, the faster piston speed you're gonna have. The higher the piston speed, the greater the potential of depression or negative vacuum created by the engine. The greater the pressure differential, the more air that will be drawn into the cylinder. You'll often see peak torque and power happen earlier in the RPM range, and you'll be able to better utilize bigger valves and bigger ports without losing velocity because the engine behaves as if it's turning even faster. So that piston speed is gonna help it to almost replicate like the engine's turning even more RPMs when it's not. And then of course we go on to mechanical leverage. Everybody knows if you have a hundred pound block and you have a pry bar to lift that block, the longer the pry bar, the easier it is, the more torque you can produce to be able to move that hundred pound block. And that's the same with a stroker kit. The cylinder pressure pushing the piston down has more mechanical leverage over the crankshaft, thus allowing you to make more torque. Horsepower is just a calculation. It's torque times RPM divided by 5252, and that equals horsepower. When you see us run engines on our dyno, it's basically a big calculator. Basically, it's taking what we are inputting to the dyno with the engine, 
and it's running that through a calculation to tell us what the horsepower and torque is. It's just going to take what you're putting into it and it's going to put out the answer to that equation uh, at the end of the dyno pull. Now we're going to also talk about some of the pistons that EC has developed and has to offer you for your build. One of these pistons is the 72 millimeter Tilson Hyper Nutectic Piston. EC Carburetors designed the 72 millimeter piston for the Tilson 225 RS engine. That is the same piston used in their 228R and their 236R engine kits. The piston is a hyper nutectic casting, but is often mislabeled as a forged piston. Initially, the plan was to have the piston forged, but having it casted was less expensive and still would exceed the requirements of the 225RS. The lightweight design and short compression height allowed for a longer rod to reduce lateral vibration. This piston has been used in many engines pushing over 10,000 RPMs and it's a really good strong piston. Then we go on to the 76 millimeter AC Carburetors Hyper Nutectic Piston. This 76 millimeter piston is similar to the Tilson, but with a longer wrist pin for added strength and a shorter compression height than the 72 millimeter to allow a longer rod. And AC has a new 72 millimeter forged piston with oversizes available. While there has been a lot of success with the 72 millimeter Hyper Nutectic Piston, some racers have a difficulty trusting anything but a forged or billet piston in their higher PM builds. EC also had the dilemma of not having oversized pistons to offer rebuilds. So to fix this, they made a 72 millimeter forged piston with oversizing available. They shortened the compression height and had the skirts molly coated for even more performance and value. So now we go on to the 70 millimeter Wildcat piston. Now, if you know these engines, a Hemi 212 Predator comes with a flat top 70 millimeter piston as well as the Wildcat 223. But the difference between the two is the Wildcat is a lighter weight piston and it also has less material underneath the wrist pin to offer more clearance. The extra clearance is important for engines like the Predator 212 Hemi if you're wanting to use a 58 millimeter crankshaft in it. This piston will help you not hit the counterweights when the piston is at bottom dead center or at the lowest point of its stroke. Now we're going to talk about compression height and how to measure the deck height of your engine. To figure out your engine's deck height, you can measure your rotating assembly components and this is how you're going to do it. First, we need to measure the piston depth when the piston is at top dead center. AC does have a depth gauge located in the video's description and this is a must have for engine builders if you're wanting to get serious about building engines and getting the most horsepower. This is a must have to get in your toolbox. To measure piston depth, you're going to want to remove your head and head gasket from your engine. Now you can lay the gauge across the bore of the block so that the point is on top of the piston in the wrist pin center line. Basically get this as centered of the piston as possible. Since this Ghost 212 has a dish piston instead of the flat top, we need to measure it from the edge. You can do this on both sides of the wrist pin center line because most blocks are not squared. The stroke of the crankshaft is 55 millimeters or 2.165 inches. You can get a more accurate measure by measuring the travel of the piston from top dead center to bottom dead center. Take that number and divide it into half. Next, you'll need to measure the piston's compression height. Most go-kart and mini bike retailers get this wrong, especially on eBay and Amazon. They'll take from the top of the wrist pin journal to the top of the piston and they'll call that the piston height. To do this properly, you need to check from the center of the wrist pin board to the top of the piston. And how we can do that is we simply measure the bore of the wrist pin and then we divide that number in half. Then we can measure from the top of the piston to the top of that wrist pin board and add the first number to that and that will give us our piston compression height. Next, we need to find out our piston rod length. You can do this by measuring both the piston wrist pin bore and the crank bore on the rod and divide both those numbers in half. Next, you're gonna measure from the very bottom of the top hole to the very top of the bottom hole and then add those three numbers together and that's gonna give you your total rod length. Now we're gonna add all those numbers together. If your piston was in the hole, we need to add that number to it as well. If there was piston pop-up, meaning the piston is coming out of the bore, then you're gonna subtract that number. Add all those numbers together and that's gonna be the deck height of this Ghost 212 engine. The stroker kit should fit at zero deck height. You should be able to take any cranking piston and figure out the rod length to get zero deck. Now let's move on to connecting rods. 
DC started designing rods when working on the Tillerson 225 RS, where they designed the piston and the connecting rod for that engine. Since they designed the piston, they could quickly design rods with different crankshaft strokes to be the first to offer a 228 and 236cc version of the Tillerson engine. They would also build rods for their other engines, including the Tillerson 212R and the Wildcat 223. When people wanted to stroke their 212cc engines, EC made a rod to fit that crankshaft with the Wildcat flat top piston to get the most from the extra displacement and increasing compression. Another thing is EC addressed many of the clearance issues when using a 58mm stroke crankshaft, such as the dipper and the rod bolts. They would normally hit the camshaft core or the lobes or hit the block. And the camshaft core is basically the space in between each lobe of the cam. EC has also made a rod for the Wildcat 460 as well as a lot of other big block and V-twin engines in the works right now. Now we're going to talk about the difference between a billet and a forged rod. A lot of people think billet and forged are the same, but they're quite a bit different in strength, reliability, and longevity. EC's pinnacle rods are a forged rod. Forging is a piece of billet that has been pressed into a die to a near finished shape to realign the grain structure for better strength and durability. A component made of the same material will be stronger as a forging because of the realignment of the grain structure. Even though billet is a very strong way to make rods, forging takes it a step further by realigning those grain structures. You can think of it as a 2x4, how easy it is to split a 2x4 if you go with the grains. When you forge something, you're realigning all those grains and kind of entwining them, making it even stronger and harder to split. But at the end of the day, they can look very similar to the naked eye when you compare a billet versus a forged rod. But the structure of it under a microscope would be vastly different, and you could even have micro fractures in the billet rod. Another question that's came up on the channel a lot is why doesn't EC use the force oil dipper hole? Now, if you've built these engines in the past, you'll know that some rods use a hole on the dipper that's supposed to help force oil up into the rod bearing. The force oil hole is emitted to prevent stress fracturing at high RPMs. In the history of small engine and go-kart racing billet rods, Clements, Burris, Lunati, and Briggs World Formula did not use the force oil hole on the dipper, and they have not had oiling problem issues. And when we asked EC about this, they said, we simply don't see a need in it. We've never seen that we have a problem with getting oil to the rod bearing, and it makes our rods even stronger not having that hole right through the rod cap. And one question we've had asked a lot on the channel as well is, can you balance a single cylinder engine? So we looked into this, we talked to EC, we looked at some options, and basically the short version of this answer is no. It's mostly due to the lateral forces created by the counterweight at 90 degrees and 270 degrees of the crankshaft rotation, since there isn't any weight of the piston or other counterweights to cancel it out. Adding weight to balance the crankshaft may worsen these lateral forces. Even if you look at a high performance dirt bike engine that's single cylinder, the way they do balance them is add a balanced shaft. And that's why you'll see on stuff like 420 and 440 big blocks, they have that balanced shaft and we used to take them out back in the day and we would actually cause worse problems for ourselves, and the engine would vibrate even more. If you leave that balanced shaft in there, it's gonna to help to smooth out that engine by counteracting the counterweights on the crankshaft. So since these engines do not have a balance shaft, it's pretty much impossible to really balance one of these engines. And if you're gonna pay someone to balance your engine, make sure you do your homework, do some research for yourself to make sure you're gonna to wanna to go through that process and spend that money on something that you're really not gonna be able to achieve at the end of the day. And the last thing we're gonna talk about is clearancing for the 58 millimeter crankshaft. Because sometimes you can run into clearancing problems when installing the 58 millimeter crankshaft. EC is working on updating their camshaft cores which will allow for the cams to drop in so clearance doesn't need to be made for the compression release. This does depend on the lift, duration, and profile of the camshaft. The camshaft may still need clearancing for the lobes. One way to get around this is removing the compression release completely from your cam or buying a billet camshaft that doesn't have a compression release. Now, if you're racing a go-kart, you're most likely not required to have a pull start so you could use an electric starter and you wouldn't need that compression release anyways. Another benefit to removing the compression release is not having to worry about it fail in high RPMs and potentially destroying your engine. One thing you can do is buy a pre-clearance crankshaft from EC, and this is pre-machined to help you clear that compression release on the cam. They also have a full write-up on their website that we've talked about many times in the past. It's really detailed on how to do clearancing 
for the 58 millimeter crankshaft. It tells you everywhere you may have to modify your cam to clear that 58 millimeter crankshaft. So it's really important to look over that if you're thinking about buying one of these kits. All right, so I know we covered a lot of information in this video. And basically, I'm gonna sum it all up in a simplistic way so you can understand everything we went through in this video. The main reason for this video was to talk about strokers and how these kits can help you make more horsepower and what they're doing to make that horsepower for you. Another thing was, was to help you understand the components that are on the market from billet, forged, and hypernutectic. Uh, all these matter when you're making decisions on what you're gonna spend your money on to make horsepower because our whole point of our channel was to help you guys spend your money in a better way to get a better value for your dollar. And I know when we're throwing out all these crazy numbers, it can be overwhelming to someone that hasn't went this far in an engine. So basically think of it like this. When we're trying to find deck height of our block, that is basically going to be the measurement from dead center of our crankshaft to the top of the block with the head removed. So that is our deck height. So what you're going to know with that is you don't have to waste manufacturer or dealer's time calling them saying, I have a 58 millimeter crankshaft. I have this piston. What rod do I need? If you know how to measure for these things, you can find this answer for yourself by finding the deck height of your engine. And that's what we did today. We measured and found out how much length we need from the center of the crank to the top of that deck. So if we're running a 58 millimeter crankshaft and we know we're gonna run this certain flat top piston and we know it's compression height, we just gotta find out that number of the length of rod that we need to make those two connect to be zero in our deck. So that's basically all these measurements was just telling us how long it is to the top of our deck to the center of our crank. So we know uh, we can make a sound decision on what rod and piston and crank combination we can go with. You can use this for any engine. The numbers we found today was for this 212 Ghost. Now your number is gonna be different in a Wildcat. It's gonna be different in a 196 CC, but you can even use this on car engines. It's the same across the field. If it's a gasoline engine or even a diesel, you can find out this information. So. At the end of the day, we're trying to help you spend your money smarter and get more for your dollar. And that's why it's awesome that we're working with EC. I think they're one of the biggest companies in the industry that's putting information out there. And they're the reason that you're seeing this video is because they wanted to uh, clear the air and also help free up some of their time because they get this phone call all the time. It's like, what piston do I need? Or what rod length do I need? You can find it out by using these methods in this video. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, no, it was a lot of information, but it was watch it over and over if you need to. Uh, and you can learn so much from these videos because we're learning all the time as well. We'll be stroking this Ghost to a 223 in the next video, run it on a dyno, and then we'll put it on either a go-kart or a mini bike. We're gonna see how much power this Ghost can make. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to check out the links for everything we talked about, all the forge rods, the piston different pistons we talked about, everything will be linked in the video description to help you guys shop faster and uh, spend your money wiser. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you and God bless.